Hey, uh, so uh, generally uh, when we uh, talk about computational problems, we can always reduce them to decision problems. So uh, problems with uh, only one output bit. Uh, one really basic example of this is a function from n bits to m bits. Uh, you can always just compute each of the m output bits individually. Or uh, we can actually do this uh, slightly better in the quantum world. Uh, with only one quantum query to this function g here, you can compute f. Uh, other problems like uh, search problems, sampling problems, I'll reduce the function problems, uh, which in turn reduce the decision problems. So the general takeaway is that uh, usually uh, we can just talk about decision problems without loss of generality. Now in this talk, I'm uh, gonna look at, uh, does this still hold if uh, the task we're interested in is constructing a quantum state? So more precisely, uh, what, we, what we want is uh, what I call a state synthesis algorithm. So this is gonna, our goal is an algorithm A uh, that is allowed to make uh, quantum queries, uh, so in superposition to an arbitrary Boolean function. Uh, and we want it to have the property that for all states psi that we might want to construct, there exists a choice of function f, such uh, that if we plug f into the queries made by a, uh, the result is that it constructs some approximation of psi. Uh, and we have to allow some approximation error just because on a given number of qubits, there are only finitely many functions, but infinitely many states. And when we talk about constructing a state, uh, there are two uh, notions of what that can mean. Uh, one, in a non-clean, or sorry, in a clean construction, uh, we require that any ancilla qubits used uh, be reset to zero by the end of the computation. Uh, this is useful, for example, if you want to, if uh, you're in like a space limited setting and you want to reuse the qubits for other tasks, or maybe perform like different state synthesis tasks in superposition. But otherwise, maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you're just going to trace out your ancilla anyway then you can settle for a non-clean construction where uh, you end up with a uh, psi tensored with some other garbage state that may depend on psi. So what are some uh, algorithms for this problem? Well, there's a really trivial one which, uh, which runs in exponential time. And here you just uh, use one query to get the description of the state psi. And like you can use that bernstein vasrani trick so it just reduces to one quantum query to a single output function. Uh, and then once you have the description of psi, just construct it. Uh, and then if you want this to be a clean construction, use a second query to uncompute the description of psi after you've constructed psi. So uh, then there's a polynomial time uh, solution with a linear number of queries, uh, independently discovered by various authors, but first framed in this way by Aronson. Here what you do is uh, you write psi as alpha zero tensor, uh, the one qubit zero state ten or tensor uh, psi zero plus alpha one, one psi one. Uh, you query alpha zero and alpha one to polynomially many bits of precision. Uh, construct this one qubit state, alpha zero, zero plus alpha one, one. Uh, controlled on zero or one in that state, recursively construct uh, psi zero or psi one. And then uh, finally just use another query to uncompute alpha zero and alpha one so you don't have entangled garbage. And this runs in polynomial time with a linear, linear number of queries. Uh, it's efficient. There are some interesting things you can do with this. Uh, the only problem is that uh, for some applications, which I'll discuss later in this talk, really you want a solution that makes only a constant number of queries rather than polynomially many queries. So there's also a solution which uh, does use a, a constant number of queries. And uh, unlike uh, the trivial algorithm, it only runs in polynomial space rather than exponential space. Uh, this is due to Irani, Nadrajan, Nurke, Rao, and Yuen. Uh, but there are some problems with this solution. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, the circuits implementing the non-query operations are non-uniform. Uh, they're guaranteed to exist by the probabilistic method, but we have no idea what they look like. Uh, second problem, we have no upper bound on the circuit complexity of these uh, operations. They could be exponentially uh, large for all we know. And then uh, finally, uh, in the, the one query uh, non-clean version of this theorem, uh, the approximation error is only going to be inverse polynomial, whereas uh, we'd prefer in inverse exponential. So in this paper, I give an uh, algorithm that uh, solves all of these problems, uh, runs in polynomial time with a constant number of queries. Uh, so specifically, it's gonna be uh, one query for a non-clean construction of an arbitrary state, or four queries for a clean construction. And furthermore, this has the property that uh, the function f that we query to construct a state psi uh, is gonna be defined explicitly uh, given the description of the state psi. So uh, here's a table that compares all of the algorithms I just talked about. Uh, so you see that up to the exact number of uh, queries uh, in the uh, clean version, uh, this is a common improvement on all previously known uh, state synthesis algorithms. 
So uh, now I'm going to briefly talk about the proof of this uh, theorem and what the algorithm looks like. And the starting point is a, a constant error solution due to Irani, Nadrajan, Nurke, Round, Ewan. Uh, they showed that for all states psi, uh, there exists a Clifford unitary C such that you can construct psi by uh, first preparing the uniform superposition of uh, n bit strings, uh, then applying a phase of plus or minus one to each of those strings uh, by uh, one quantum query to an appropriate Boolean function, encoding those signs, and then uh, finally apply uh, C. And this uh, gives you a like, constant fidelity solution. Uh, so I'm not, just a brief uh, outline of how the proof of this goes. If you imagine that instead of C being a Clifford unitary, suppose C is har random, uh, then this uh, you know, psi C on the left is just a har random state. And har random states have high L1 norm with high probability. So you just uh, choose the uh, plus or minus one signs such that the standard basis amplitudes like line up, essentially. And then because uh, Clifford unitaries are a two design, they show that the same thing holds with uh, Clifford's instead of high random states. So that's one ingredient I'm going to use. All we need to do at this point is decrease the approximation error. Uh, the next ingredient in the proof is a, a technique in quantum algorithms called linear combinations of unitaries. And the high level idea here is that uh, suppose uh, you can implement some collection of unitaries U sub J efficiently. And what you want to implement is uh, this uh, matrix M, which is a linear combination of the U sub J. And uh, by implement M, uh, M might be non-unitary. So instead, uh, what, we, what I mean by that is you map some state psi to you know, M psi up to normalization. And this is going to fail with some probability, uh, you see here, depending on you know, the sizes of the coefficients and you know, essentially how you know, magnitude of uh, M psi. And then uh, like it, you know whether you succeeded or not. Uh, this is just a common quantum algorithms technique. And so then we're just going to use linear combinations of unitaries uh, to reduce the error from Irani at all. So uh, let's say psi is the state yeah, that we want to construct. Uh, let's phi sub zero be a state uh, like the one Irani et al. considered, so Clifford unitary times binary phase state that achieves uh, some constant fidelity approximation of psi. Uh, then uh, we subtract off from psi you know, some constant uh, you know, increment uh, times phi sub zero. Now we let uh, phi sub one be like a Clifford times phase state, you know, that uh, constant uh, fidelity approximation of that remainder. Uh, subtract off some smaller constant times phi sub one, and we just keep iterating in this way, uh, truncate the iteration after a polynomial number of steps, and the result, uh, you can show that uh, this is going to be a good approximation of psi. So now we've written psi as a linear combination of some states. Uh, each of those states individually we can efficiently construct with one query. So now just do a linear combination of unitaries where the unitaries in that linear combination are the ones that uh, construct uh, the phi sub j states. And so then out comes an exponentially close approximation of psi uh, with some failure probability, because uh, you know, LCU always fails with some probability. And this, turns, uh, this failure probability turns out to be constant. So now all that we need to do is increase the success probability. The simplest uh, way to do this is by parallel repetition. Uh, so just do the previous slide a bunch of times in parallel. Um, merge all the parallel queries into a single query so it doesn't blow up the query complexity. With high probability, uh, one of the LCU attempts is going to succeed, and that's the one you output. Uh, and this is a non-clean solution. For a clean solution, the simplest uh, thing to do is just uh, do the LCU thing from the previous slide, uh, and then do amplitude amplification to uh, increase the accuracy. And there's also a hybrid approach you can use, a, like a mix of parallel repetition and amplitude amplification. Uh, that uh, results in a clean solution with four queries. So now I'm going to talk about some applications of the main theorem. Uh, the first of these is like a quantum state analog of the IP equals P space theorem in a constant number of rounds. So uh, let's just uh, review some background. Uh, so in an interactive proof, uh, first uh, there's going to be a polynomial time verifier which gets some input string. And then it exchanges messages back and forth with an arbitrarily powerful but untrusted prover. Uh, and then the verifier has to accept or reject. And this should satisfy conditions called completeness and soundness. Completeness says that uh, if x is in the language L that uh, the verifier is trying to compute, then the, there should exist uh, something the prover can do that will cause the verifier to always accept. And the soundness condition is that if x is not in the language L, then regardless of what uh, the uh, prover does, the verifier will reject with high probability. So 
uh, how powerful are these? So IP is a set of languages with interactive proofs. This is like a multi-round uh, in randomized analog of NP. Uh, and this is famously equal to P space, so computations that can be done in polynomial space. Uh, it's also equal to QIP, so like IP, but uh, the verifier is quantum, polynomial time. And this is also equal to QIP3, which is uh, just three messages. So uh, prover sends a message, verifier responds, prover sends another message, and then that's it. Then verifier accepts or rejects. Okay. So next step in the story, uh, in previous uh, work with uh, Ewan, we defined like a quantum state uh, analog of uh, interactive proofs. So here, uh, the verifier is trying to construct a state, uh, let's call it row. It exchanges a bunch of messages with the prover, and then uh, the verifier will accept or reject, and when accepting, also output some state row tilde. So the completeness condition, uh, similar, into norm similar to normal interactive proofs, it's just that there should exist a prover that causes the verifier to accept. Soundness condition is uh, what's going to be a little different here. Now it's so uh, that for all provers such that uh, the verifier accepts with non-negligible probability, uh, the verifier's output state should be accurate to within inverse polynomial trace distance. So now uh, we proved that uh, uh, state QIP equals state P space. So uh, State QIP, it's just a uh, set of states that can be constructed by these sort of interactive proofs. Uh, state P space, it's like a quantum state analog of P space. Uh, so in previous work with uh, Ewan, uh, we showed that uh, state P space is contained in state QIP. And I'll just briefly sketch the proof of this. Uh, we start with uh, the poly polynomial time state synthesis algorithm where, like I presented it earlier in this talk, you just grow the state one qubit at a time. Uh, and the uh, queries in that are going to be answered in superposition by reducing to the IP equals P space protocol. Uh, and then there are some other steps you need to undo to make sure that uh, this doesn't result in uh, unfriendly entanglement uh, between the verifier and a dishonest prover, but uh, we show ways to get around that issue. And then conversely, uh, Metger and Ewan showed state QIP and state P space. So now the punchline to all this. Uh, in this paper, I show that you can do state P space and state QIP with a constant number of uh, messages, specifically six messages. And the proof of this is basically uh, the same as uh, my and Ewan's uh, proof of state P space and state QIP, except uh, now instead of uh, reducing to Aronson's protocol where you grow the uh, state one qubit at a time, you reduce uh, to the one query state synthesis algorithm from this paper and answer the query in superposition using the QIP three equals P space protocol. Uh, and this gives you six total messages. Okay, uh, now moving on to another application of the main theorem. This is going to be a barrier to, uh, so QACF0 is a quantum circuit class that I'll define in a couple slides. Uh, barrier to uh, essentially these circuit lower bounds for approximately constructing explicit quantum states. So what's the state of the art on, on this? Uh, we know exponential size lower bounds for exact constructions of explicit states. Uh, but you know, these rely on like the transcendence degree, and like it's uh, very fragile. If you do introduce any approximation error, like the proof breaks down. Uh, if we want to allow like even uh, exponentially small approximation error, then all we know how to do is QNC zero lower bounds, so constant depth circuits with just one and two qubit gates. You no, know, just based on the fact that any output qubit of a state constructed by these circuits can only depend on constantly many input qubits. So why is it so hard to prove lower bounds? Why can't we go beyond QNC0. Well, Aronson considered this question. Uh, he asked, you know, so suppose we had some state psi, an explicit state that we knew couldn't be constructed by a poly size quantum circuit. Uh, you know, everything on this slide is with an exponentially small error, that is. Uh, then let A denote the state synthesis algorithm that grows the state one qubit at a time. Uh, let F be the function that, uh, such that A with query access to F constructs uh, psi. So F just encodes the conditional amplitudes of psi. Then we know that F does not have a poly size circuit, uh, a quantum poly size circuit. In other words, F is not in BQB poly, because otherwise you could just plug that circuit implementation for F into A, and you would get a poly size circuit for constructing psi, which we've assumed doesn't exist. And so the takeaway would be that psi cannot be computed, or sorry, F cannot be computed by a poly size circuit. And this would be a huge deal. Like, we don't even know how to prove a super polynomial size lower bound in the classical world for explicit functions, let alone in the quantum world. So it seems like we're stuck. 
But now we can ask, well, what if we consider a weaker question than this? So suppose that instead of trying to prove uh, super polynomial size lower bounds for explicit functions, we consider some weaker quantum circuit class that's st still stronger than QNC0. Then can we make progress? And one class that we might consider is called QACF0. Uh, this is a quantum analog of AC0. Uh, specifically, it's a polynomial size constant depth uh, quantum circuits with arbitrary one qubit gates and these arbitrarily large uh, and and or gates, as well as uh, fan out gates. So fan out, you can just think of it as making copies of a classical bit in superposition. Uh, this is something you need to do in order to even directly be able to implement AC0 uh, on these circuits. And there's also some uh, physical motivation for this, like uh, some people have been trying to build these sort of circuits in the lab directly. Okay, and now, uh, in this paper, I show that we can't even prove uh, QACF0 lower bounds for constructing explicit states. Uh, the reason this holds is because Aronson and Gottesman, uh, uh, basically they proved that Clifford unitaries can be efficiently implemented in QACF0. Technically, they proved something slightly weaker, but if you look at their proof, this is basically implied. Uh, and so that means the non-query operations from this paper's state synthesis algorithm can be done in QACF0. So by reasoning similar to Aronson's barrier, uh, no, QACF0 lower bounds for explicit states imply lower, similar lower bounds for explicit functions, uh, specifically the oracle associated with that state. And this would be a really big deal because uh, QACF0 includes a Boolean circuit class called TC0, which we don't have lower bounds for. So if we can show that an explicit state uh, cannot be uh, constructed in QACF0, then we get breakthrough uh, classical circuit lower bounds for explicit functions. And now I'm just going to talk about one more application of the main theorem. Uh, this is uh, the circuit complexity of approximately constructing worst case states. Uh, so here's what I show. Uh, fix some universal gate set G, which uh, just assume it's powerful enough to exactly simulate classical computation. Uh, then you can construct any n qubit state to within error epsilon by a circuit of size 2 to the n log 1 over epsilon over n uh, with gates from G. So this is an uh, interesting upper bound. Oh, and furthermore, this is tight, by the way. There exist uh, states for which you need at least 2 to the n log 1 over epsilon over n uh, size in order to construct. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, upper bound, even if you just forget about the universal gate set. Uh, this improves the, proves the state of the yard, which uh, was previously 2 to the n. Uh, and, but then universal, ga yeah. universal gate set, uh, it's uh, necessary for me to prove the lower bound. Uh, I mean, open problem if it holds without this, but uh, at least by my night proof techniques, that's what we needed. Uh, so the proof of this, uh, for the upper bound, just again, start with this paper state synthesis algorithm. Uh, Lupinov proved that any function from m bits to one bit can be computed by a circuit of size order two to the m over m. So just plug this circuit, circuit implementation uh, into the oracle and you get a, a similar size circuit for constructing an arbitrary state. And the lower bound is just a counting argument. Uh, there are lots of states, but only so many small circuits over a universal gate set. So open problems. Uh, the big one is, can we do all this for unitaries? But Fermi is going to talk about that in the next slide, so I'm not going to talk about or next talk, so I'm not going to talk about it now. Uh, so instead, of what I'm going to talk about is, uh, suppose that uh, like uh, the state we're trying to construct is in some, it's not an arbitrary state, it's in some restricted, uh, relatively low complexity class of states. Uh, can we get a lower uh, complexity uh, upper bound on the oracle? So if, in, uh, in particular, I'm, I'm going to talk about QMA witness states. So SAT has efficient search to decision reductions, by which I mean uh, finding a SAT solution efficiently reduces to deciding if one exists. Uh, does the same thing hold for the lo local Hamiltonian problem? Uh, does constructing ground states of local Hamiltonians efficiently reduce to one query to a QMA oracle? Uh, it does reduce to one query to a, a PP oracle. Uh, Irani had all showed that. And they also showed that uh, the answer to this, to this question is no relative to a random quantum oracle. Thank you. Questions? Uh, okay, so let me let me ask. Uh, so how how do you uh, how do you do do it with one query that you both construct this state and apply Clifford? I think. Oh, good question. So. Uh, 
Yeah, basically, uh, like in the one query, you like I'll, you query the sign bit and you simultaneously query the description of that Clifford unitary, and then like controlled on the description of that Clifford, you apply the Clifford. And like this is going to be a multi-output function, but using bernstein vazirani you can convert it to a single output function. Yes. Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. I might have missed this, but is the upper bound constructive? Yeah. Can you give an algorithm for that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a given algorithm for it. And if you're uh, wondering about how, how to compute the description of the Clifford efficiently, just uh, brute force search over all Cliffords. Given that states are exponentially large anyway, this is uh, you know, relatively efficient given the size of the state. So you would uh, need to search over an exponentially many circuits? Yeah, well, yeah, but there are exponentially many states anyway, so no big deal. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me ask another question. So why four, four queries? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, the way the hybrid approach works is uh, first you do uh, the uh, one query parallel repetition approach. And what you're left with uh, is like a bunch of copies of the LCU failure state uh, and like let's say one copy of psi. So then just uh, uncompute all of the LCU failure states using amplitude amplification, which takes three queries. Okay, I see, thanks. Well, if there is no further questions, let's thank the speaker again.